Hey everybody, just wanted to come on here really quick without announcing because I've been away. I've been away from Instagram for a very, very long time. I just wanted to come and give an update and try and do some Q&A. If there is some Q&A and if there isn't any, then we'll just, you know, check in, go live for a quick update and see what's coming up for any of you. On my end, I have just been traveling around India really been doing non-stop stuff i went to delhi where i did uh where i did an event for kama ayurveda and that was actually a really cool event because we spoke about youth and longevity and it was a very short talk with uh, with some great tips as to how ex to how to extend your youth how to make it much longer merry christmas all of you merry merry christmas uh and so we did that basically where we where we did that and then i recorded a, f- a few podcasts while i was still in delhi and spoke about men's health and ayurveda veganism and ayurveda a bunch of cool stuff i went to jodhpur for a family wedding i'm back in mumbai just really living it up let's do that okay arti let's do that let's talk about my theory of karma and i'm going to find the orientation to actually talk about it right now mm. so let me jump right into it you know so when we are young and we are taught we're taught about karma we are essentially told that you do a certain amount of good or bad and that's kind of paid back to you so it doesn't matter how much you transform as a human being i mean this is what you're told that it doesn't matter how much you're transformed as a human being if you've done something bad at any point in your life it's going to come back to bite you now to me that just never made sense it's like if you reformed why would something from the past come back to bite you because sometimes just even like your own your own penance your own guilt by that by itself is actually a redemption enough you know so it didn't make sense to me so anyways well i thought about this further and what i basically realized is that this theory of karma is not actually is not accurate at all and and this is this is why right this give and take right that if you do something something will happen to you again is actually only true when you have not broken your sanskaras now let's go into what are sanskaras and then we will go we will be able to understand this better so sanskaras are tendencies that we carry from lifetime to lifetime their scripts their tendencies their things that you really pick up, pick on and get exaggerated in childhood from birth to birth so for example somebody samskara may be that they get really upset when somebody lies or somebody samskara is to lie so as long as we hold on to that samskara right we create bondages around it that maybe you've lied maybe you've like you know it just creates bondages because of the samskara the samskara creates the karma and the samskara is is very magnetic so as long as the samskara exists the bondage of karma you'll keep kind of you'll keep lying and you'll keep getting payback but what happens when that samskara breaks what happens when you kind of let's say reform and break that samskara what then happens is that all the karma that you had tied that was associated with that particular samskara gets annihilated so it's not that you have to actually go back and do a payback for all of your actions the payback is enough in dropping the samskara so it is so illogical when people say that who your whole life is about debit and credit no makes no sense the whole life is about that the karma is attached magnetically to the samskaras and as long as the samskaras exist your give and take will exist the minute the greed the anger the whatever all of these negative emotions the minute they drop all the karma is associated with it just kind of get annihilated and there's no payback that's left and that's why overnight people can get enlightenment and really move to a higher space uh so i hope that made sense um arti i don't know if i'm in the best mind state to explain something so complicated but i tried 
what fruits can you have postpartum and what should we avoid you definitely want to avoid um, anything that's too tarty anything that's too sour but what you can have is a little bit of pomegranate a little bit of papaya maybe and cooked apples yeah basically right every china ayurveda that samskaras are really that pole that hold on to you know that keep keep that karma going so if there is any other questions i'll be happy to answer them but i just wanted to come on live here do a quick check-in because i've been absconding forever I, i have reposted some of my old videos um but otherwise for the most part i've been absconding and i think i will be back next saturday doing a live but just in case anybody has questions bring them on right now while i take a few sips of my adulty tea that's a very broad question how to take care of skin i've done several talks on it several workshops on it so i'm not going to go into details about it merry christmas um Yeah, karma is not only bad actually. So, I mean, karma is anything that bonds us to the world, right? Anything you do from an emotion becomes karma. Anything you do from a samskara, love, hate, greed, lust, anger, and the lower and and the stronger the emotion, the lower the emotion, the stronger the karma bondage. Hi, Nisha. Lovely to see you as well. what to other questions of from the audience at karma mostly around just what to eat uh, so i give them a basic concept of youth and longevity and i will be doing a workshop in jan or around youth and longevity so i give them a basic understanding of what really youth and longevity means and then what kind of food and lifestyle and practices you can do to keep that going so my views on pitra and matra doshas that lead us um so i'll be honest with you i'm not 100% sure but now since you asked the question i am actually going to dwell on it and i'm sure i'll come up with something uh to me you know this is basically the bondages the strong bondages that we carry we we, we kind of carry the strongest bondages related to our samskaras with our family and uh everybody who has that kind of same same give and take kind of gets bonded together and then it really is like this deep bond which kind of like oh grandfather was like this and then he did certain things to his son and then the son turned out like this and then that happened to his son and it's kind of like goes on ancestrally and i think to sort that at the root energetically Uh, you are the universe, and you're not equal to even a speck of the universe. How do these two thoughts go hand in hand? It absolutely goes hand in hand, right? So when we think about us as matter, when we limit ourselves to matter, we're not even a speck in this whole universe of matter. But we are, in fact, not actually matter. But when we kind of associate ourselves with this matter, with this ego, with this body. I mean we are not even microscopic in the views of like let's say if there was somebody who was watching everything on this in this universe we just he would not even notice us we would be less than microscopic like not even microscopic right but here we're talking of matter but when we dissolve that matter and all we are left is this great just this vibration which is the universe which is a part of the universe so we all the matter is formed from that vibration so when we are in our essence in our essence beyond the matter we are the universe because we are one with the cosmos the minute we attach matter to us and become me we are just like this much i hope that made sense i absolutely believe in past and future lives right so mm, why and how i think it just comes from a deep knowing i just I just know I feel like I just know it very very deeply. I don't think I can intellectually explain it, but what I can tell you intellectually is there's a reason why we're all born. We're not born on a level playing field. We're just we're just shedding bodies, you know, from one life to another. Um uh, because there's only so much that this body can endure in one life and just so much that we can open up in our Pandora's box. 
and we open up a Pandora's box each lifetime and we say, what is it that I want to deal with in this life? And then based on what we've done, we kind of subconsciously set an intention for what we really want in our next life. And I know like I'm basically planning for my next life from now. And it's not a morbid thought. It's not like, oh my God, I'm going to put off things for today. I, I also have the intention to experience everything that I want to experience in this life and then open up more possibilities for my next. But it just comes from a deep knowing. And I, I feel like some of the meditations have bought that about, right? I had done past life regressions, but that's not why I believe in this. I always just knew that this happens, this exists. Do I have a take on black seed oil? Is it consumption? So it's a little bit warming in Ayurveda. I know it's very well consumed in the West, but in the Ayurvedic perspective, it's a little bit warming. So I'm a little careful of its consumption. Thank you, Sohel. Mm. I love that question about, can you talk about Jwara and what do you think of COVID? I hope you can attend my next Saturday live and ask me the same question because I'd like to get into it a little bit more deeply. Can we break through if they don't do not align with our present nature? If talking about the Matra and Pritra Dosha, you absolutely can. There's one generation that can come about and just break all of those bondages. You can just really raise rise to such a height that all of those bondages which have ancestrally gone on can just dissolve and disperse. Buttermilk can be consumed in the winter, that is correct. You find it difficult to focus and activate your chakras. I think it's just practice. Is it just enough for you to work on to reduce our samskaras to break the bondage or should everyone around us? Not at all. You just need to break your samskaras. It's amazing. You break your samskara and suddenly something huge opens up in that space, right? So let's say you're saying, I'm going to break my samskaras in relationships one at a time. And actually that's what I do. And that's the work I do with my therapist as well. When I say, hey, this is the area I want to work on. And then I really examine curiously for the samskaras present in that in that department. And then the minute those samskaras break like huge things, which you would never imagine happening, happen overnight. How do we let go of our rigid old belief system? Again, that, right? We examine the samskaras. They always come from some fear, some conditioning. And it's that fear that we have to sit with and get over, examining the fear rather than the belief system. Knowing that, hey, this is just coming from mere fear or this is just coming from heresy or this is coming from the need for approval, this belief, belief system, or this is coming from a need for safety. I think just that self-awareness of where the belief system is coming from allows us to break that belief system. So I think we've done some good questions today. Just wanted to hop on, do this really quick. Uh, I wish you guys all a Merry Christmas and a Happy Year and I will be seeing you soon again.